So welcome to our feta plant. We've been making feta since 1988. Every year that we've been making feta, it's been a growth category for us. So over the years, as we expanded uh, in the old plant, we eventually ran out of room and weren't able to make any more cheese. So in 2000, my dad and uncles decided to take a leap of faith and build a whole new plant. And uh, with that, uh, we have our central piece of equipment, which is our continuous coagulator. And we're now making 120,000 pounds of feta a day. So the neat thing about the coagulator is uh, with feta, it's a very, very large curd, which means it's very delicate and you can break it easy. Coagulators really excel at handling curd very gently. So all day long, we add uh, milk to our cells. Each of these cells, we make them as the coagulator moves. The belt moves around 16 inches a minute. Each cell gets 1,800 pounds of milk. The milk comes from the pasteurizer. We inject the starter culture directly into the milk line. Comes up here, we add our rennet and our lipase, and the rennet's what coagulates the milk. So as the uh, cells move down the coagulator, we're going through the cheese making process. Uh, probably the easiest way to think about it, this process can, uh, versus a traditional vat, is a traditional vat, it's a batch process, so it's like making an, a pizza one at a time in your oven versus this would be a continuous uh, oven at a pizzeria. We're doing all the same steps, we're just getting more throughput out of this equipment. It takes roughly an hour and a half from when we put milk into the coagulator to when we get curd out of the other end. And um, from there goes into the form, which we'll get to see all those steps. All right, so now the milk has gelled together in the coagulator. And after it gels, we give it some time and then we're ready to cut. So you can see that we remove the plates behind me that we're dividing the different cells. And then that homogeneous mass will go through two sets of cutters. And when you cut that uh, coagulum, that's when you start getting your separation of your curd and your whey. So as soon as you cut that, the curds want to start pushing whey out. So we cut the curd, we give it around 15 minutes to heal up, like get a little bit stronger uh, so it doesn't break so easy. And then what we do is we'll actually flow all of this curd out of the coagulator by gravity and it'll go to our filling station where we fill the individual forms. At that point, the curd will start to knit together in the forms. And after that, we have about a day's wait before we can pull it out of the form. But here you can see a nice separation of the curd in the whey. And as I said earlier, feta is a very delicate curd. It's because it's a very large curd. Feta uh, is about the size of a pool key chalk, whereas you will start looking at like Munster and Cheddar curd, that's the size of a small piece of popcorn, all the way down to uh, your grana salad cheese like Parmesan and Swiss, which is smaller than a grain of rice. So with each of those curd salads, you just need to handle a little bit different. Feta is gentle, slow drain, so that's again why we have the coagulator. Okay, so behind me you can see the empty forms uh, coming into the filler. So they come in. The curd is coming out of the coagulator, goes over a D-way drum, so what liquid whey that we have drops out of the fed at that point. We index the form in, filler drops to a predetermined level, and then we rake the curd in, uh, and we run it, the rake right back over the top, just like you would a measuring cup, and that way we get an even fill. So each cell of the six cells in the form gets roughly 55 pounds of curd, and after it's drained for a day, we end up with a 20-pound slab. So with most cheeses, you get the majority of your whey and your curd separation in the vat, and then there's just a little bit left in the form. With feta, you get the majority of your whey and your curd separation in the form. So overnight, we'll lose around a little better than 30 pounds of whey. So after, the next step in this process, after we fill it, we stack the forms up, and stacking up, up just saves space, because uh, if we didn't stack them up, we'd have to have six times more floor space for draining than we do. So we stack them six high, then we'll go out to our drain room and they'll get parked for the night. Okay, so right after the filler, as I said, we stack the block forms up, we stack them six high, save space, and they continue to drain in the form. Uh, feta doesn't get pressed, so the forms are just interlinked on each other, so we're not pressing the cheese at all. But the 
starter culture is causing a pH drop in the cheese and that's just causing it to push more and more of the way out. And once we get them six high, we put them on a little carriage there so that they can roll, so that we're not trying to drag all that weight around on plastic, because right here they weigh roughly 3,000 pounds. So once we get them stacked, our next stop will be the drain room where you can see all the cheese being stored. So this is our drain room where we store all of our feta. So during the day, what happens is when we start up in the morning, we'll take a stack that's full of feta, we'll take that off of our conveyor, take the cheese out, get the form washed, and then it'll go right back around to the filler. Once we fill, then we start refilling these conveyors again. And we'll do that throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, all the conveyors will stop for the night. So each conveyor will have been emptied and refilled in the course of a day. And again, we're storing 150,000 pounds of feta out here. And then from here, we'll actually see the sack get unsacked and the cheese coming out of the block forms. Okay, so here we can see the feta actually coming out of the block forms. You can see that back there. We flip the block forms upside down, we pull the block form off, and then travels down this conveyor. And then we'll feed two different lines with that. One line is where we pack the feta pails for food service and industrial use. And on this closer line, is where we're pack, making the racks that will go into a large pit brine for all of our feta crumbles, both food service and retail. From this point, uh, once we make a rack, we'll push it over to the brine, hoist it in, and it'll sit in the brine overnight. And tomorrow, it'll be ready to come out and be packed into crumbles. So all, all cheese has salt in it. All the cheeses that we make here at Klondike are brine cheeses. So there's no salt in the feta right now. We have to put it into a brine bath and it'll soak up the salt from the brine and that's how feta gets its uh, salty flavor. And then from here, we can see one of the racks going in and out of the brine next. So after the feta comes out of its form, for crumbling, we need to send it through a separate brine process and you can see one of the racks coming out of the brine right now. It goes into the brine for 24 hours, we pull it out and then we can follow it into the crumble room. So here we are in our crumble room. You can see we're running three of our four lines today. So we bring the feta loaf in from the brines. It goes through a crumbling machine, uh, makes our crumbles. We add a little bit of potato starch to the crumbles so that they don't stick together. And then we send it up to our weigh scales. The weigh scales weigh out the product however much we want, uh, anywhere from four ounce cups up to uh, five pound bags and everything in between. So we do both of our retail and our food service lines in here. All the front end equipment's exactly the same. All of our crumbles are the same. It's just what package we wind up putting it in. From this point, uh, we can actually see some of the newest automation that we put in. Uh, we did add some robots a few years ago to actually pack our retail cups. And we added those robots because uh, we started having people get carpal tunnel from packing the cups. So we did exactly what OSHA said we should do. And every two hours, we had somebody new packing cups. And that had the effect of making sure that everyone started having wrist problems. So we actually had a robot cell designed for us. Uh, and we don't put in automation to reduce labor at all, because that person still has a job. They're now just supervising the robot instead of actually putting the cups in. So here we are in our Munster plant. Uh, we built this plant two years ago. Similar to Feta, in our old facility, we were completely out of room to make more cheese. And if our customers were to grow any, we were going to have to build a new facility. So we decided to uh, invest the money and built a brand new plant. And we more than tripled our capacity. So the theoretical limit on our Munster and Havarti plant is 120,000 pounds a day. Our old plant was capped out at about 40,000 pounds a day. So we bring the milk in from the farm. We buy directly from the farmer. The intake, our milk intake is attached to the Munster plant. Tests every load of milk that comes in for antibiotics. It's stored in the silo. Goes into our make vats. Uh, our make vats are 50,000 pound vats, so that means they hold 50,000 pounds of milk. So each vat is a, is a truckload of milk. We'll go through our cheese make process, uh, heating the milk, starter culture, rennet, cut, stir, and then we'll transfer the curd to our filler. And we have three different fillers for our three different format sizes. So we do Munster, Brick, and Havarti. Uh, we also make uh, all those varieties in a long-down version for uh, slicing operations. So from here, 
We'll go up and we'll actually see the cheese going into the block forms. So here we are at the filler where the curd and the whey comes out of that and we'll put it into the block forms. So the curd again goes over a D whey drum, very similar to feta, so the liquid whey comes out. We do introduce a little whey back in so that we get a consistent fill. And then we actually monitor the level with laser so we get a consistent fill, loaf over loaf. Once we get the form full, we'll, uh, stack, we'll stack all the forms up. And then Munster, Brick, and Avardi go through a couple hour acidification process where we give them a hot water shower, we turn them, uh, we monitor the pH, and all that is to help the cheese form properly, the curtain to knit better, and also to get the pH that we're looking for. Once we've gone through the acidification process, we'll actually suck the cheese out of the block forms and put it into our brine. And all that's done uh, just with an operator, so nobody touches the cheese anymore. Uh, it's all done uh, with machines. So from here, we'll actually go see the cheese going into the brine. So the Munster have already once been through its acidification process, it's ready to go into the salt brine overnight. So you can see the racks behind me that the salt will, the cheese will float into those racks, we'll fill them up, and then we'll bring them out and they'll get uh, put into a position in the brine overnight. When we circulate the brine, we add new salt to it every day. And again, that's how the Munster and the Havarti is gonna pick up its brine, just through osmosis. So that'll sit in there overnight. Uh, this entire room is chilled. Uh, so this is when we start cooling the cheese down. Then the next day, we'll pull that rack out. We'll actually push the cheese off onto the conveyor belt and that conveyor belt will take all that cheese to packaging. All the packaging that we do on site is um, just full loaves for uh, Munster and Havarti. We don't do any size reduction here. Uh, most of our customers send the cheese either to a slicing operation or straight to uh, the deli, uh, service deli. And we can go see that packaging right now. So a day after the Munster was put into the brine, here we are, it's ready for packaging. So we pull it out of the brine, we put it onto a rack, uh, that transports it from the brine to the packaging area. And here, uh, everything we do is a vacuum sealed bag. So put the loaf into a bag, that can seal it. Uh, shrink tunnel, melt detect. Generally what we make are six packs, but we can also do uh, two packs for the Munster. For the Havarti, it's generally either a nine pound loaf or that's uh, split into half and two uh, four and a half pound loaves into the package. Uh, from there, it's ready for the service deli or um, catering needs. So welcome to our yogurt, Greek yogurt plant. Uh, we built our Greek yogurt plant seven years ago. Um, for obvious reasons, Greek yogurt was getting very popular. We did something a little different than other people. When we built our plant, we built it to be very flexible so that we can do whatever our customer needs. We didn't want to be the necessarily the biggest plant, but we are one of the most flexible. So with our make process, what we do is we bring in milk from, again, from the farm. We skim it. Uh, so everything, everything starts with skim milk, and then for whatever our customers needs, we can add however much fat back to the milk that's required. Then uh, we'll add our, our protein. So the way that we make our Greek yogurt is we bring in milk protein concentrate, and that's how we boost the protein in the milk versus trying to skim it or run it through an ultrafiltration system. And this method we actually learned from a yogurt maker in Greece. So. It is one of the more prevalent ways to do it uh, in Greece. So we get our, our yogurt milk where we want it, the fat level, the protein level we want, and then we put it into our ferment tanks. We add the cultures in there and that's where it will acidify. And once we reach a certain acidity level, we'll do what we call breaking it. Because the yogurt will gel up in the tanks and so then we'll actually break it. And then once we break it, we'll pump it out of the out of the ferment tanks and we're going to send it out to our packaging equipment which we also did uh, very versatile so for packaging we can do everything from 2600 pound totes for uh, ingredient customers uh, 45 pound pails for uh, food service customers and what we're running today the 5.3 ounce retail cups so we'll follow the yogurt out and we'll see the yogurt actually being put into the cups 
So here we are at our uh, filling machine for our 5.3 ounce retail. Uh, we can also do four ounce uh, cups on this machine. We have a different machine that we do for larger containers. So we have different machines for different sizes. So on this machine, what happens is we denest the cup. We actually blow a little bit of uh, hydrogen peroxide into the cup to sanitize it. And then we blow it out with HEPA filtered air to make sure that there's nothing left in it. We do a fruit on the bottom fill. So the first station is we put the fruit in the bottom of the cup. Then we'll fill the yogurt into the cup. We'll heat seal the film to the cup. And then we push it out. All the cups go over a check weigher. Any cups that don't make weight, we reject. And then from there, uh, we'll put it into its final packaging. And we run roughly 240 cups a minute. Um, so it comes along pretty decent. There's some plants that are faster, some slower. This suits us just fine. And then from this point, it'll get palletized and into the cooler and ready for shipment.